Welcome back. So uh, the market continues to be under pressure, but it is trying to fight back. Uh, we have Devang Mehta now joining in uh, with some thoughts uh, as well. Devang, I want to start off with some of the financial stocks that have been quite weak uh, in the last few sessions. Uh, and let's take a look at, uh, you know, the uh, the HDFC trio, no longer twins. If I could talk about HDFC Life, the parent HDFC itself and the bank, uh, you know, which would be your uh, top picks or all three perhaps? Good afternoon, Surbhi. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I think uh, clearly, uh, of course, uh, all the HDFC uh, are part of our portfolios, all the three HDFC, which you talked about, the parent HDFC, the home lender, uh, HDFC bank, as well as uh, in the insurance, uh, HDFC life. Uh, and, and, and clearly, I think they are all market leaders in their own right, in the in their own domain they operate. Uh, I think any weakness that is uh, pursued here has to be clearly viewed in terms of that uh, uh, the stocks had all rallied uh, too much uh, ahead of expectations and uh, it's it's entirely i can i can say the the market uh, uh, correction already is overdue and that is leading to correction in this uh, set of stocks as well so clearly over here we'll be uh, hunting for it and uh, and using it as a buying and an accumulating opportunity okay that's the numbers from varak engineering remember this is a sector where we have seen the biggest impact of lockdown so net loss of 300 crores versus a profit of 87 crores is what you have on Varek Engineering, one of the recent listings, of course. Uh, uh, do we have any other number? Only the net uh, loss number is there. So, uh, 308 crore loss. Uh, stocks not falling a lot uh, because you know perhaps the market would have factored that in that uh, it would be a beautiful washout quarter. In fact, that's been the theme uh, this quarter. The companies which have come out with the worst numbers have actually not fallen because the market believes that uh, uh, it is now in the price. But anyway, let's do one thing. Let's get you some more market opinion. Earlier, we spoke with Manish Gunwani of Nippon India Mutual Fund, who believes there are still many winners uh, from the broader market, which can still be bought. Near term, there could be some consolidation, I feel, because the market on aggregate earnings is a bit expensive. If you look at the Nifty EPS for FY22, which could be somewhere around 575 to 650, um, you're clearly trading at much above historical multiples. I'm talking about FI22 because 21 is going to be uh, distorted a lot. Um, so you're looking at almost two year forward uh, multiple, uh, which is uh, kind of 17, 18 times, which is quite high. Um, so I would think that the headline index uh, probably uh, should consolidate here for some time. I think. A lot of people are looking at stocks from a near-term perspective. If you go back to Jan 2018 and compare the broader market, you see a lot of mid and small caps still down 30, 40, 60 percent from that peak, and it's almost two years. So the book value, the capacity has expanded, etc. Then clearly, um, you're not so uh, cautious in the sense that I. Bottom up, we're still able to uh, very comfortably look at stocks and say that over next two, three years, can these stocks give 50 to 100 percent return? There are a lot of potential candidates for that kind of returns. Where we see value from a two to three year perspective is a lot of these uh, domestic um, sector aligned, uh, domestic economy aligned sectors, um, autos, financials real estate, industrials, consumables, a lot of these uh, sectors. Um, and some part of uh, mid-cap IT and pharma still looks interesting because uh, clearly over there also the large caps have largely outperformed the mid-cap. Metals have a long, long way to go, so they can still be multi-baggers from here. Um, so, so near term, maybe again, because it bounced back, we are a bit cautious, but overall, I'll still be, be quite positive on that space. Okay. All right. That was the view coming in from uh, Nippon India uh, Mutual Fund. Uh, we also got a view today on, by the way, this big rally that we've seen in precious metals. We did catch up with Kevin Smith of Crestcat Capital. Now, Kevin says that he's still incredibly bullish on gold and silver. We're still incredibly bullish on, on precious metals, gold and silver, and uh, you know we've seen a big run up in uh, in in the in the stocks and in and in both uh, gold and silver, uh, and then a pullback over the, you know this week, um, uh, you know 15% pullback in silver and many of the of the mining stocks. 
Uh, but now we're, you know, the past couple of days, we've been off to the races again. So uh, I, I really do think that valuations are still really cheap within the precious metal space. And uh, we could get into more of the reasons for that, but um, I think there's a lot more to go. These are the highest valuations that we have ever seen, Hi higher than the tech bubble in 2000, higher than, than the 1929 stock market bubble here, here in the U.S. We, we look at valuations across eight different metrics, whether it's EV to free cash flow, price to sales, price to book, EV to EBITDA, I mean, you name it, margin adjusted PE ratios. Uh, we are at in the hundredth percentile across the board for for valuations, and it's not just it's not just tech stocks or growth stocks or cyclical stocks. It's it's everything. Yes, yeah, stocks are running everywhere in India and of course around the world in some of the biggest markets like the U.S. of A. We need to take a break on that note. Come back with the market close. <laughs> 